Hey guys, Jasmine of IPS. Today we're talking about what is the healthcare revenue cycle. We're gonna split this video up into a few different parts so that we can take a deep dive into each specific element. The next part is denial and AR management. So again, if you have a clearing house that is doing effective job or a great job at managing these denials for you, then it doesn't really matter what your software can do as far as the denial management. You can do a lot of that denial management um, as soon as it comes in. Our process internally here at IPS is very tight on denial management. We love being able to track our denials. We look at our denials on a daily basis and our team, the AR team, is, is devoted half of their energies devoted to denial management because we get those EOBs back very quickly or the ERAs come back from the insurance company very quickly. And so what we find is we're able to resolve these denials and get rid of these issues that might be showing up in our aging report in the following cycle had we not properly reviewed and, um, and actually tried to resolve those denials. So super important that you have a denial management process separate from your AR process. So again, if you don't have a really great software that does not, that in the software doesn't do a great job at kind of pulling apart new denials that come in, then I 100% recommend that you get yourself into a clearinghouse that can do a phenomenal job for you at that. So um, once that, once you've gotten past the denial, let's say you don't have, you did not receive a denial or you didn't get a claim rejection or both. And instead now we have a claim that's sitting out there and we aren't sure what that is. That's when the AR management process comes in. So AR stands for accounts receivables. Do a further kind of deep dive video in exactly what accounts receivables is and kind of how to properly manage that. But I will say that if you are properly managing your AR, it's at least happening at a very minimum that you're generating a full aging report and accounts receivables report, preferably by aged accounts, so meaning utilizing aging uh, buckets, as we call them, and again, separate video, I'll, I'll talk more in detail about that, but utilizing aging buckets so that you can um, segment the data, so you can be able to separate and say, this Blue Cross Blue Shield has $500 in over, over 60 and 2000 in over 90 and you know whatever those specific buckets are, you would be able to very clearly tell what insurance company is causing you the biggest heartache. Um, and what, what an insurance AR report contains are things like the patient's information, perhaps the dates of services. Um, it's just various things depending on the software, but what you would like, what you want it to contain is at a very minimum a, a totals area so that you can tell what your problem carriers and perhaps your problem patients accounts are so that you can get right to the meat of it and be able to get to work on getting a handle on where your money is. All right, so the accounts receivables report basically is a report that we recommend that you run on at, le at a very minimum on a monthly basis. And this is a report that you're going to be reviewing um, thoroughly. So from end to end, you want to make sure that you are addressing every single account on that report. Um, very frequently when we run through our aging report, because we have a very solid denial management system, we might see that the team has already very recently reviewed those accounts and already have taken action to try to get that payment um, re recovered by the, from the insurance company. So do expect if you've, if you've gotten the denial management piece down, then you're going to do fine. You do not need to, to, um, to double up on the work if you've, within the last couple of days, worked on those accounts. But do expect that you will find accounts on your aging report that you have not received as a, as I said, a, um, a claim rejection back from the insurance company or a denial. And those are what we call missing claims, right? Those are things that we, we as AR team want to take a moment um, throughout our cycle or our monthly cycle at a minimum to be looking at those claims and getting a very good sense of where they are. 
So the revenue cycle is moving very quickly these days. So we see payment from most carriers within two weeks of claim submission. So usually about 14 business days, sometimes closer to 20 um, with companies like Aetna. Very frequently, they, they take the longest time right now in our adjudication. Sometimes government processing companies um, or government affiliated agencies might take a little longer depending on how antiquated their systems are. So do get a good handle on what your, what we call days in aging or how long it takes for a claim to get paid or beginning from beginning to end. So you want to spend some time trying to understand your own figures so that you then can be able to decide when you should start calling on a claim. What do I mean? So if it's Aetna, for example, and you per generate your aging report, you're looking at an aging report and you know that Aetna takes about 20 days, then you would not want to start calling on that claim until it's beyond that 20 day mark. Otherwise, you're going to be calling or or I say calling, but it's not usually calling. You're going to be following up on claims with the insurance company that have already been paid. And that's a big waste of time for everybody. So we always recommend to get a good sense of what your carrier's days in aging or what your pr practice's specific days in aging is and what your carrier's um, speed of payment is so that you can be able to um, get your claims paid and invest time in stuff that actually um, is a good investment of your energy. Music